Michigan is in the middle of a massive vaccination effort, but not everyone is getting on board. One Michigan state representative is going public about why he is refusing a COVID vaccine. He spoke to our Paula Tutman, who's hearing from experts who have concerns about the potential impact on public policy. Paula? Hey, Karen. Yeah, you know what? People have various opinions about a lot of things, and sometimes those opinions are grounded in misinformation, but it's their opinion. But when misinformation drives policy and law, it bears further scrutiny. He's Steve Cara, a 32-year-old Republican state rep of the 59th District of Southwest Michigan. And in terms of getting or not getting a COVID vaccine... I'd say refusal, but I, I respect other people's choice to get it, though. He cites a multitude of reasons. It's in its emergency use only authorization. Just the amount of pressure that government is putting and imposing. We're even talking about potential vaccine passports. To be clear, the Biden administration has come out squarely and unequivocally against even the notion of vaccine passports for proof of inoculation. And the vaccines currently available have not been mandated by the government. I think there's other remedies, things like making sure that I get my vitamin D. Uh, hydroxychloroquine is an option if people want to go with that. Fact check. Hydroxychloroquine was studied as a prophylactic way to stop the virus infection. It was shown not to be effective at all. But one of his biggest complaints is funding. He voted no on HB 4019 in February, a bill that would disperse federal COVID funding for vaccine distribution, testing, food assistance, and other areas. He states because the allocation of funding for contact tracing and surveillance without a warrant is intrusive and inappropriate governance. Perhaps your private sector company could say, hey, we're going to start the research and development for a vaccine, and they, and they sell it to people on the market. Somebody who wants to pay 50, 60, 70 dollars, go to the doctor, pay their copay and get COVID-19 and pay 50 bucks for it in the private sector, the insurance companies, all in a private sector fashion. So you're saying that it would be OK for low income people to try to figure out how to get 50 or 60 dollars to get a vaccine as opposed to the government saying, hey, this is free. This could save your life. Well, how many of those people also have a cell phone? Maybe you not have your cell phone for a month. I mean, these are, if it's life or death, I think people can find 50 or 60 bucks to go buy a, a vaccine off the market. Dr. Jason Wasserman is a bioethics expert from Oakland University. He watched the entire unedited interview. I think what's really dangerous is that, um, you know, this kind of notion is sweeping uh, through the country, especially in different sectors. Again, it's, it's more startling coming from an elected official because their obligation is to create public policy on the basis of the weight of the evidence. This is a shocking kind of almost cult-like mentality. And that's what I'm more concerned about is that no matter how much evidence is brought to bear, there seem to be people who are committed to um, unsupported views that are damaging public health. So while uh, State Rep Kara is a, a state rep now, he has made it clear that he will be challenging the 6th District U.S. Congressperson, Fred Upton, in the midterms in 2022, Karen. All right. Thank you, Paula.